said to me, you know, interesting that you concentrate on models. So I should mention something else that as a function of my personality, I finally started thinking about set theory more seriously. I had this little book. I couldn't penetrate it. I got the axioms from it. But I started thinking about constructing models for set theory. And then I said, so this must be talking about. And I looked at the book, and sure enough, he had the notion of constructability. But soon after that, in my rash way, well, to, to excuse myself, I must say how old I was, but what was I? I was 26, I guess. I said, you know, Gertle made a mistake. In what sense? Well, his construction does not correspond to what most mathematicians would call a construction. If I asked you to construct a ring, you would say, okay, a ring has zero and one, it has one plus one, one plus it has three, it has four, and then if you give me a field, it has four shifts, and you get the rational numbers. But Gertler didn't do that. He did not construct what I call the minimal model of set theory. His construction was too generous. And I was rather happy with that result, although I didn't think it was too profound. I later found out that Jefferson had found the result a few years earlier, but hadn't, uh, according to Martin Davis, didn't attract much attention. Because one of the results of this method shows that Gödel's construction, or anything like it, could never prove the negation of the continuum hypothesis being independent. Uh, there was no inner model. And I think if people had understood that, they would have tried my ideas earlier. They would have said, you're not going to do it by playing with sentences. You better work with models. Again, retrospection seems very easy, but people thought that was strange. Even I thought it was strange. I said, yeah, the school of learning high theory says there are countable models, but that's a fake. Sure, they're countable as viewed from the outside, but they're not really countable. You won't be able to use that. Well, it was a shock to me when I said, that. I said aha, that was the missing link, the missing piece in the puzzle, that they were countable. So all these things would have been wonderful to discuss with Gertl, but uh, we never did. And in the same vein, let me say the other point that I would have liked to hear, and to be totally honest, to feel that he would, he would be a little impressed with it, was that I don't feel I just worked on the independence of the continuum hypothesis. I did not, because my method eventually proved many, many results of that type. I was thinking about what the axioms were and I would have liked to hear if you felt that Horsey gave a deeper understanding of what truth was. I think it does in some sense. I wouldn't want to push it too much, but it's been applied to fields that I never dreamed possible. So I think in some sense we, we came full circle, but I came back to a syntactical point of view, so to speak, worrying about you know, what can be proved using what. But in the spirit, I feel I was supposed to, to school them who thought about models. Uh, there's a wonderful comment in the Collected Works of Gödel, a review by Walt of a review of Gödel, the paper of Skolem, and he says, in which Skolem essentially discovered ultra filters or something very close to it. And he said, Skolem published a series of papers which were very well regarded at that time, but they look even better and better as time went on. So Skolem is sort of my, I say, he's my own brother, if Gödel is my spiritual father. I would have loved to have discussed it with school, and I think he would have he would have immediately felt in some sense, you know, that gee, I could have done this too if I had only, you know, thought in the right direction. So I, I I sort of missed that. Anyhow, so I don't want to take up too much time now. In summing up, I can say the visit to the institute when I gave her the paper was one of the high points of my life. I can tell you another personal story. I sat there, and a mathematician I had met a year or two before sat next to me and said to me, you know, you look like you're very hopped up or some such version. He said, I would take it easy because he said, I knew so-and-so when he did his big result, and it almost, he almost had a nervous breakdown. Oh, I didn't think I was that bad off, but I was in a strange state. I suddenly felt I understood things that no one had ever seen. So when I feel the kinship with Gertle, it's partially that I felt we, we traveled down the same path. We thought about things that we were pretty sure nobody ever thought about. And, uh, you know, we were both depressed. We went through moments of gloom and despair. But eventually, everything turned out very well. So here I am today, enjoying this wonderful conference, which far exceeded all my expectations. And I think I've even gotten through this talk. <laughs> so I told Cy that I don't really want to answer questions 
maybe because I don't want to discuss personal things beyond what I said, but if it's someone I know who wants to ask me a simple question, I'm willing to answer, but I, you know, I don't want to discuss too many more personal things about her or about myself. Is there anyone, anyone who feels an absolute 